What's up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Jimmy Bacon from the Hamid Style Podcast. If you haven't heard our episodes, you go check it out. He featured me on his channel, and we're doing an amazing tutorial giveaway community integrative project where we each made three decks, and we're going to be playing these three decks against each other. They're at different skill levels. They start extremely simple, and they get somewhat advanced something you maybe take to the locals but we're doing this video here where we're going to show you guys how we play these decks you're going to learn how to play them and the three lucky winners of the giveaway are actually going to be able to have the chance to play these decks against each other on our channels if we can figure out the technical difficulties because it only took us an hour to get this video figured out but i'm sure we'll figure it out anyway <laughs> <laughs> so uh i've actually yeah, never really... gotten a chance to play this leader so i'm pumped Sweet. I've gotten about 500 chances to play my leader, so <laughs> I'm pumped. Um, so yeah, I'm playing Soul Striker, and Jimmy is playing Starter Vegeta, so this is the leader. Um, I guess before we start the games, we'll just explain what our leaders do. So basically, in Dragon Ball Super Card Game, you have one card that starts in play, and it's in play the whole time. Now, if you're a more advanced player, you might want to skip through some of this, but we're going to just explain everything as much as we can as we go through these games, because it's designed for beginners to learn how to play the game. So every deck is uh, comprised of 50 cards. You can have six, up to 60 in a deck, but the less is less you have is generally better for consistency reasons um some you know the decks i play i usually play 52 or 53 because there's mill strategies and games go longer now so you don't want to deck out if you draw all the cards in your deck you lose the game so you need to have cards in your deck um in order to continue playing your leader card is the one card that starts in play and your leader card has the ability to flip over onto its other side the time in which it flips over is specified under where it says awaken. So you start your leader on the unawakened side, and then at some point during the game, based on the awakening uh, specification, you will flip your leader over. Generally, a leader flips over when it has four life. That's kind of consistent between leaders. However, with both of these decks, we're playing leaders that can also awaken when they have specific unisons out in play. So. Uh, Soul Striker, or this Goku, awakens when he has a unison specified cost of three in play, and Vegeta can awaken when he has a unison specified cost of two in play. Uh, this deck that I'm playing is blue. Blue is more of an energy uh, management kind of deck style of play, and the deck that Jimmy is playing is red. Red is more aggressive, and that's why his leader awakens earlier. Um, do you have anything you want to chime in on about that? Um, yeah, so with when we're talking about like the unisons and the leader cards, um, I guess it's good to kind of go into when you have a unison, it's going to be a separate card that you can also only play one of. So it's almost like unisons can kind of act as a companion card to your leader. Um, so they're very yep. powerful and have static effects that go on throughout the course of the game that you have access to. Uh, which is And we are mechanic. not playing unisons. We're not playing unisons in the first deck. So this first deck does not have any unisons, but the next two decks both have unisons. So we yep. won't interact with that awakening mechanic in this first game, but we will in the second and third game. Yep. Um, yeah, and unisons, yeah, when we get to them, I guess we'll talk about them more. But okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna shuffle your deck. After you shuffle, you always offer your opponent to cut your deck since we're in different parts of the world and playing on the internet, we're just gonna cut our own deck and then we roll two dice two six-sided dice and whoever rolls high has to go first i rolled a nine i rolled, I rolled a 12. i've never Ooh, rolled a 12 with these dice. My, my metal me. dice oh, all right all right joe crew so well. <laughs> all right uh okay so the first thing you do after you roll dice is you draw six cards off the top of your deck um, I'm nasty, so oftentimes I'll just grab six and it makes me feel like I'm a lot better. I recommend that's a skill that you train yourself into. If you can just <laughs> grab six off the top, it feels really good. Um, and then in these games, I mean, we're going to, uh, you can, Jim, you can kind of see what's in my hands. It doesn't matter all that much because we're really just kind of teaching how to play. But basically in these decks, the majority of the deck are skillless cards. So these decks we made the 
almost the entirety of the deck are cards that don't have any skills. They just have a energy cost and a battle power, which we'll explain as we go into the game. So usually in this, uh, in this matchup, when you're just using these really basic decks, you get to do something called a mulligan at the beginning of the game. So after you draw six cards, you get to choose any number of those six and send them back to your deck. In these skillless decks, it's kind of a good idea just to keep any cards that have words on them because you have so many cards without words. That's kind of the rule of thumb for this matchup. So I usually keep it, anything that has a word on it and then I send everything back. Yeah, and another good um, thing to think about too is just overall curve. So when you look at your card, the number in the top left is essentially how much mana or in this game we call it energy that you need to use to cast it or play it. So if you see a card right. that requires a ton of energy, a lot of times, unless it's maybe something that's essential to you winning, you're going to send that back because you want cards that you can play on curve that you can play in your first couple turns of the game. Right. In this game, you draw a lot of cards. So you see a lot of your deck and it's likely that you'll see a card that you send back. Um, and each turn you get one successive energy and we'll go through that as we play the game but um each turn you basically get one energy and once you have that energy you're going to be able to use that energy once per turn for the duration of the game so i sent back five which means i'm going to draw five more cards yep and i sent back and... three so i drew three more and that's going to be my hand and then after you set your after you send back shuffle and then draw your hand back to six you choose eight cards off the top of your deck and you put them in your life area. Your life area are the cards that are connected to your leader card. Once your life area is depleted of cards, you lose the game and your opponent will win the game once they do that. So since I went first, I'm gonna be going, or since I won the dice roll, I'm gonna be going first. Now, in my experience, a lot of people have called the very first player the turn player. The turn player doesn't get to draw or attack on the very first turn. For the duration of the game, every time you start your turn, you draw a card, and you will also be able to attack with cards the turn you play them, unless otherwise specified. So on my turn, there's, there's two parts of the turn. There's a charge phase and a main phase. And for the charge phase, I'm gonna choose a card in my hand and place it in my energy area. And I know I have a lot of these two energy skillless cards, so I'm gonna choose this card to put it in my energy area. Once a card goes into your energy area, it loses everything on the card except its color. So this is a blue card, and when you put a card in your energy area, you wanna put it inverted so that it doesn't get mixed up with your drop area. And when this card gets placed in my energy area, this is now worth one blue energy. Now the only thing that I'd be able to do on this turn is play a one energy card. The only one energy cards that I have are counter attacks. You can see the one energy for counter there. So I'm just going to leave that energy up. I can't attack. And at this point, I'm going to pass my turn. So now it's Jimmy's turn. Okay. So as the player going second, a lot of times I'll say it's the player on the draw because you are the one who gets to draw first. So from here going forward, both of us at the start of our turn will draw one card. And then same thing, I'll choose one card in my hand to play as energy. So for me, I have essentially, very similar to him, a lot of skillless cards. Um, so what's going through my head now is what cards do I not need, which same logic, probably just my skillless cards. Um, I have multiple one drop skillless cards in my hand already. So I'm gonna use that. Um, so I charge my first energy. And then at this point, I'm free to do whatever I want. In Dragon Ball, you don't have to do anything in any specific order after you start your turn. So I can attack, play cards, attack again, play more cards, as long as I can pay whatever costs that are necessary to use the card, I can do it. Um, so at this and point- And that's called your charge phase. So Jimmy just finished his charge phase, which is draw and put a card in your energy. And once that's over, it's done. And a lot of people ask, hey, can I put a card in my energy after I draw more cards? And the answer is no. You have to choose a card from the card pool you have in your hand during your charge phase. So that that affects your options in other styles of gameplay. So it's important that you know you put your energy down first because if you don't do that, you will lose your opportunity to put an energy because technically you don't actually have to put an energy. It's your opportunity to put an energy. And if you forget and start your turn, technically you cannot put an energy after that, which will really hurt you in the game. 
Yep, yep, exactly. Um, so at this point, I'm, I'm going to go right into it. I'm going to attack Vegeta into Goku. Um, so when I go into battle and you declare an attack, you turn your card sideways. Uh, anytime a card goes sideways, it's switching it to rest mode. So leaders sometimes will have autos. This card does as well. So if you look any card, if you see that blue keyword skill, um, you'll see it says auto. So it's blue behind it and in white letters says auto. Um, it says when this card attacks, draw one card, then it gets plus 5,000 power for the turn. So I'll declare my attack and declare my auto. And then at this point, it will go on to Joku and he'll have to decide, do I have any card that I can counter with at this point? Right. So the very first thing is Jimmy's declaring an attack and he's attacking my leader and he can attack my leader because leaders can always be attacked. We'll talk about battle cards after, but it's a little different for battle cards. Now, when he attacks, the number that he's attacking with is the number that's printed on his leader card, which is 10,000. I have 10,000 at mine, which means that if this were ta attack were to just go through as is, it's gonna be 10,000 to 10,000, and the tie is gonna go to the attacker. So the attack would go through and it would deal a damage to me. I have two options in my hand. I have two counter attacks. Now I could say, I wanna use this energy to counter the attack and protect my life. However, in this game, especially in this matchup, it's kind of a race to see who can get to four life first because our leaders become much more powerful once we're at four life. So in this instance, I'm going to say I don't have any counter attacks. And now we go into the battle step. Perfect. So now that he has no negates, I'm going to resolve my auto where my card where I'll draw one card and then my leader gets plus 5000 power. Um, it is for the entire turn. So what I'm going to do is put a little dice on him. That just reminds me that he is at 15,000 right now. Um, so at this point, when you're in battle, I now have the opportunity to combo cards if I would like. And now I'm what would be called my offense step. So during this time, I can combo cards, which if you look at any battle card, I'll just put this one on the table, for example. You can see at the top, there's gonna be two numbers. Uh, there's a number that will either say zero, typically one or two. And that's the cost to combo with it. So if I wanted to use, we'll just put this card back on the table. If I wanted to use this card to combo, it's a zero. So that zero means it's free to combo with. And if I were to place it down on the table, this would give my leader for this battle an additional 5,000 power. So he would and go from card 15 to placed, 20. It's placed, it's placed in your combo area, which exists basically between your battle area, which is where cards are played and your energy area, which is down here. So the combo area is this area. And during battle, when you're comboing with cards, cards remain in the combo area until the end of combat. Yep, exactly. So when you want to combo, it's when you want to beef up your attack to make an attack go through. In this case, like he said, we're both in a race to get to four life. So I'm not really in a rush to combo any cards because a huge factor in the Dragon Ball Super card game is hand advantage. I want to try right. and have a bigger hand than my opponent. That means hopefully I'm in the lead. So I will say no combos and then I will pass it over that way he can go on the defense step if he would like to combo out or if he has any effects he would like to use. So at this point, if I wanted to combo out, I would actually have to combo two cards. Since he's at 15 right now, I'd have to go over 15 and that would leave me with three cards in hand, which would really cause a problem for me later in the game. And the benefit of getting attacked is when he attacks me, this card from my life is actually going to go into my hand. So I get another card in my hand. I'm also closer to four life which will allow me to awaken um and yeah so in this game a good rule of thumb if you've ever seen dragon ball at the end of the fights they like do these huge blasts and there's like unreasonable destruction of landscape that happens it's kind of how this game works is at the beginning you're just kind of poking and doing little attacks taking damage and then once you awaken it becomes a lot more of a control game which you'll see Yep, exactly. So now the battle has ended. He took the life. I got what I wanted. I drew my card. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I wanted to see a lot of times what I will do when I play is I don't like to reveal what I'm going to do to my opponent. So now that I know what his decision was to take that life, now I can make a more educated decision on where I want to go with my turn. Because remember, you can do things in any order. So now I'm going to decide to play a battle card. So I will tap my one energy and switch it to rest mode. 
and then I will play Shu. So Shu's a battle card. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you ha young, why would I play dog, Vegeta man. when I have Shu, bro? <laughs> Dragon Ball Shu. <laughs> so, the number in the top left, like I said, is the energy cost for the card. So he costs one, and if you look closely, you can see a little red circle at the top of Shu. So you can see it right next to that one. Um, that means the energy I use, at least one of those energy, had to be a red energy. If I had a different color, I would not be able to play him because it's one energy and that one red circle tells me that one energy has to be red. Now at this point, my battle cards can attack. There's no summoning sickness in Dragon Ball, so they can attack the turn that they're played. So if I wanted to, I could attack his leader. But what's going through my head is if I attack, that puts an extra card in his hand and doesn't do anything for me. So in this case, it really doesn't make sense to attack. What I'm trying to do right now is just build my board and get some board presence. So at this point, I'm tapped out. I've used all my energy. I've attacked with my leader. I don't want to attack with my battle card. I'm out of things to do. So I'm going to pass turn. I'll take this dice right, so off because he loses now the 5,000 power because I ended my turn. So for my turn, I'm going to start by drawing a card and then choosing a card in my hand and putting it in my energy area. So I'm going to go ahead and put this Dabura in my energy area. Now, when I put multiple energy in my energy area, I like to put them on top of each other and I like to put them so I can see the blue, the dots right here. So I know this is a blue card. This is a blue card. Sometimes there's multicolor cards and there's different color cards. And that way I can keep them all organized and see what the different colors are. And I keep them stacked like this so I know how many there are. If I want to tap one, I can keep it tapped and it just keeps this whole area a little bit neater. So same thing with Jimmy. Jimmy did something called a pro gamer maneuver where he played Shu and didn't attack with him because if he had attacked with Shu, now when I attack, I'm going to attack Shu instead of attacking his leader. Even though I'm not dealing life damage to him, I'm going to be clearing his board and I'm going to be depriving him of cards in his hand and depriving him of being able to awaken in this matchup because awakening in this matchup is just super, super important. So I'm going to go ahead and tap my leader sideways, declare an attack on Vegeta and ask Jimmy if he has any negates. Yep, so at this point, I have an opportunity to use anything in my hand that says counterattack, but I'm tapped out, and realistically, I want this attack to go through, so I'll say no negates. And now my auto will resolve. My auto says when this card attacks, you can draw a card or turn one of your energy back to active mode. Pretty much every single time with this leader, you're gonna wanna draw, because cards just win this game. Uh, so it's 10,000 to... Uh, 10,000 so that is going to be my attack no combos from my end okay yep so now it goes to me on the defense step uh, as we've already discussed it could combo but it doesn't make sense to get out of this attack I want the card so I will take the hit and take a life to my hand and now I'm going to do a similar thing that Jimmy did I am going to play the best looking card in my hand this is Tapion Ooh. he's a two energy card two blue energy is required I'm going to play him turn him sideways and I am going to not attack with him because I'm doing the same thing and building my board and I don't want to give Jimmy the opportunity to attack this and deprive me of cards in hand. So with that, I'm going to pass my turn and the turn's going to go to Jimmy. Perfect. Okay, and I'll draw. And by the way, uh, Shu also has a sword, so just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh man, the so... days of super combos. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I'm going to charge a card. Um, this is actually a tough charge for me. So what I'm looking at in my hand is I have a lot of my, I've drawn a lot of my cards that have text on it. <laughs> so we're playing very basic <laughs> decks and I don't really want to charge any of them. So realistically, I have two options. Um, I'm going to charge this Majin Buu. Um, and the reason I charged him is one, he's a three drop. So he costs three energy and he actually has a permanent where he comes in rest mode. So this is going to be a play where I'm delayed a turn if I played him. So at this point, it's better off just to put him into my energy. Um, I'll also untap my leader and switch him back to active mode because as part of your charge step, remember you draw, untap and charge your card. So that's how you use your energy from the last turn on the next turn. You kind of have to balance and choose if you want to keep energy to use it defensively or if you want to exhaust it and use it so that you're augmenting your board or your resources through the course of the game. Yep. So at this point, 
I'm going to structure my turn pretty similarly. I'll declare an attack on his leader by turning my card sideways. I'll say no negates because I don't want to use any cards in my hand. I also don't have any energy open to negate right now. So okay. no negates. And then my auto, I will draw a card. Always remember to declare your autos as well. Um, it really, as when this happens, it's a mandatory auto because it just says when this card attacks, but there are cards with effects that are not mandatory. So if you forget to declare your right. auto, you technically can't use it and then you'll miss your window. So it's a good habit to always declare right. it. Right. All right. So that's 10,000 or you're at 15,000 yep. and I ask if he has any combos. Yep. So he didn't negate i'm not going to combo i'll leave it at 15 for the same reasons we've already discussed and i'll pass back to him on and, his defense step and i will take that hit into my hand no combos from my end either yep sounds good and at this point ironically i will do the same thing he did i will tap two i will play my favorite skillless card my favorite this is my favorite in the whole game so i had to play this <laughs> The village monster coming down, baby. Yo, monster cuddle. <laughs> I, uh, this is actually my favorite skills card in the game. What? So it is. Yeah, I didn't talk it up as much, but I think this is the prettiest skillless card in Yo. CBS card game. It's so nice. So nice. Uh, Destiny. New players, pre release stamp set, mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> um, when a set comes out, before the set releases you can get packs with your booster boxes that you buy or packs that you buy and sometimes they do tournaments and very small in the text for uncommons and rares you can get a card that says pre-release in gold foil it makes zero difference for the the effect of the card except the psychological and psychosomatic effects of the card are significantly augmented radically so fling your decks out <laughs> So right now what's going through my head is I could technically try to push him right now and I could start swinging, but all that will do if I swung with both my battle cards is put him to four life and then give him them targets to swing at. So it's still a little too early for me to start pushing. I still just want to build my board. So this is all I really want to do. I'm tapped out. I will pass turn back to you taking my dice off. Yep. So I'm going to draw a card here for my turn. Everything in my uh, play area switches back to active mode. I'm going to choose a card from my hand and put it in my energy. And I know I got a lot of these. This is actually one of my second favorite. So I'll put it in my energy. And now I have Super Goku and Super and Goku in my energy area and Debora keeping things spicy. All right. Uh, so I have the first thing that I'm going to do same sequence, just attack with my leader to leader. Uh, 10,000 and I will draw for that attack and I will say no combos I'll leave it at 10,000 Yep. and we take those so I will put that card in my those. hand <laughs> and now I am going to pay 3 energy for Dabra oh my god he's going to come into That's play and I'm just going to do yeah he's a 30,000 so he's a big attack he costs 3 energy uh, skillless cards generally have a higher battle power relative to the amount of raw energy that they cost um and at this point i'm just going to do the same thing i'm going to pass because i'm just building my board so yep. go ahead all right so my charge step i will untap all my cards i will draw a card and we will charge one sadly we are got to go with the double boo <laughs> he is just looking double for boo. the energy <laughs> um, yeah and some it's going to be that big boo energy. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes new players get confused with the numbers. Remember what we said in the beginning. Once you put this card in energy, the card is blank. So the one, the threes, they don't mean anything. Each one of these just counts as one red energy to use. Um, right. They just retain the color. Yep. So at this point, I will go ahead and declare an attack with my leader to his leader. And I'll say no negates. Yep. Uh, my auto will happen. I'll draw a card. He gets the 5k. So he goes up to 15,000. And I will say no combos. And I'll say no combos and I'll take that hit into my hand. All right. So moving up the chain, we are now going to tap three for our three drop skillless. And we will play full power frost. Yo, that man's nasty. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> so we got one, two, three on the board. 
Uh, he's at five life. So there's a couple of things I could do here. If I wanted, I could start actually swinging, right? So I could swing with my shoe, try and get him down to four. And once he's at four life, it's going to put him on the defense. So if now I start swinging with my village monster and my full power frost, it's going to force him to either start taking life he does not want to take now, or he's going to start having to combo cards. Um, the issue is that if I attack with any of these, it gives him a target to essentially just take me out of the game by not letting me awaken. So I'm still going to hold off. And at this point, I will just pass the turn back to him. That was a good explanation of that thought process, and I think that's the right decision. But old Joku has some tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I just have a bunch of skeleton cards. <laughs> this is when you pull out the secret identity and say, suck it, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to choose a card and put it in my energy area. So I am going to charge this. Uh, Super Stan Sun Gohan. Um, now I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna attack his leader with my leader. Yep, no auto, debates. draw a card, and uh, that's just gonna be ten thousand. Yep, and we take those. And now I'm going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. We untap. I think you guys are getting the idea now. We draw and we have to pick a card to charge. So at this point, I'm in a pretty interesting spot. So I have cards in my hand that have text on them and I'm actually going to charge one. Um, so we're going to charge this topo. And the reason I selected this, I know we said we want to hold on to those cards that aren't skillless, but right now I have multiple of these in my hand. And to activate his effect, which we'll get into, I'm sure, later in the game, I have to discard one card from my hand. So having multiple of these, I realistically am only going to be able to resolve so many in this matchup because I ultimately don't want to lose that kind of hand advantage. If I was resolve right. all four, that's eight cards out of my hand in a matchup like this. I already can't come back from that. So knowing I have Correct. multiple, it's fine to charge this for right now. And um, and when I see that charge, that also gives me information that I know he has that card in his deck. Exactly. That's why it doesn't even matter yeah. that I even said that either, because as soon as I charge this, knowing this matchup, this also tells my opponent he's got another. <laughs> he's right. got another in right. his hand. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to declare an attack on your leader with my leader. My auto okay, will I'll happen. say no negate. Yep, my auto resolves. I'll draw my card. And uh, I will leave it at 15,000. And I'm going to take that hit into my hand. All right, so now we're in a really interesting scenario. We're starting to get down to the wire where he is now at four life. I can start pressuring him, um, but I'm also at five life. So if I start pressuring him here, I'm not going to be able to awaken. So now I have to make a decision that do I think I can create enough hand disparity here where it will be okay. And I'll just say, that's fine. I'll sit at five life for a while. My leader gains the 5k. So I don't really care too much about losing that power. And I can just start to push or I can just continue to build my board up. So. At this point, what I have to think about is what happens when he awakens. When he awakens, he gets to draw two cards. So I'm thinking, okay, what are the number of my cards in hand to his number? So how many cards right now do you have in your hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and I also have ten. Um, so for right now, it really does not make too much sense for me to pressure, although you could make the argument that it does. Um, but realistically, I want to be able to awaken and I want to have a really big turn where I pop off. Um, so at yeah. this point, I am just going to use my energy to actually make my board really big in the hopes that next turn I can go crazy. Um, so we are going to tap two play my favorite big boy and we're going to tap two more and play another one of my favorite big boy. Now this is a little risky <laughs> because I'm tapped out now. So if he decided to say, 
So if he decides to really pressure hard, he can definitely do a number on me next turn. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens, and I will yeah, pass turn back to him. I am. All right. See, you gotta smell that opening thread like in Demon Slayer. I don't know <laughs> if you guys have seen Demon Slayer, but at this point in a, in a in a higher level game, you actually are making a real decision. Okay, is this the point where I'm going to start to put the pressure on? Does Nappa go in the energy? I think so. Um, so here we go. I'm going to ask Jimmy how many cards in hand. That's the first most important thing. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two. I, I only have eight. All right. He has eight cards. I have ten cards. There's two cards in his life that are going to go into his hand to put his card hand, hand of ten cards. And then when he awakens, or if he were to take the last two, he'd get, you know, two more cards. You also can awaken, which is going to put a card in his hand and give him an energy back. So I have to think about how I want to do this methodically. The first thing I want to do is just awaken. With Soul Striker, with this leader, it doesn't matter when you awaken because you're just drawing two cards. For Jimmy, he wants to awaken when he at least has one energy tap because he's going to untap an energy when he awakens. So the first thing I'm going to do now, it's in my main phase, I'm going to clear my awakening, flip, flip my leader over since I have four or less life, and I'm going to draw two cards. Uh, once I draw those two cards, I want to use my energy because if I, when I use my energy after my leader attack, now my auto doesn't just draw me a card, it draws a card and turns two of my energy back to active mode. So I'm going to find something here in my hand to play in my battle area. And I think what I'm going to play is I'm going to play another Deborah. Oh, oh, baby. Big boy. Uh, and then here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start attacking small. I am going to go in because I see an opening and I see an opportunity. So I'm going to, I'm going to push a little bit here and see how he responds to my push. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with my leader at Vegeta. Since this is 15,000, this is the lowest, and he's going to be most likely to take it because it's going to put him in awakening range. So I'm going to declare this attack 15,000 at your leader, auto pending. Yep. And at this point, I will say no negates. So I draw a card and I choose two of my energy and switch them back to active mode. Now it's 15,000 to 10,000. I feel confident that he's going to take this hit, so I'm going to say no combos. Yep, so this becomes a really actually more interesting play than one might think for me because I know I can feel him wanting to push me here, right? So I could try to defend, but then he can also decide to just take an alternative route and then not awaken me. So it's a pretty ballsy move if I were to combo out of this like if i combo my shoe on a card from hand and then say are you gonna push me or no um realistically the answer is probably no so i'm gonna be forced to take this hit but that's my thought process right now is should i combo out do i think he is going to push since i tapped out here and if he does i know i probably i'm not going to combo out of these big deboras so i'm saying okay he has four energy he could realistically attack me up to five more times because he might play two more two drops so now i'm saying i'm at five life that's five damage so you kind of have to decide where you want to go with this ultimately i am going to take the hit all right so now i see that opening thread and i say in my head Tatakai, which means attack <laughs> <in> Japanese. <laughs> So I'm going to start doing some stuff here where the first attack, I'm going to attack Tapion to his leader. And now I can't attack any of his battle cards because they're all in active mode. So if you guys have noticed, we haven't been attacking battle cards. We've only been attacking leader cards. Leader cards can always get attacked. Battle cards can only get attacked when they're in rest mode. So you have to attack with a battle card first, unless the card specifies otherwise, but there's not that many cards in the game that do that, unless you're playing Champa and Beerus next set, which is gonna be lit, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attack his leader with Tapion. So that's 20,000 to his leader. Now he has the opportunity to negate. Yep, and I will say no negates. And now we go into the battle step. So I'm gonna say no combos. Okay. So here is another interesting point in the game because during my defense step, in addition to comboing, I can also activate battle skills. I can act actually activate my awaken if I wanted to. So I could awaken, make my leader a 15k and make this a little bit easier to get out of. Um, now I have a little bit of a different plan of what I want to do. So I'm trying to see, can I hold my awaken and does it make sense to? 
uh, in this case, I don't know what he's going to do. If I knew that he was only going to play maybe one more Deborah, I would feel pretty safe and not awakening and upholding it, but ultimately there just isn't really a reason to here. So sadly, I will have to awaken and waste that, untap one, and then I'm going to, or I'm sorry, and untap draw two. draw one also. Or, oh, he's untapped two. Right, yeah, right, right. yeah, 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 yeah. He's an yeah, he's two. untapped two. We'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good yep. idea. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's an untapped two. So I'll untap two energy. My leader becomes a 15K. He does get some new abilities, but unfortunately, none of them will trigger during his turn. Um, and I will super combo. So we're seeing the first super combo here in the game. A super combo, in this one at least, is a zero plus 10K. So instead of just five, he's going to boost my leader up to 25,000. And if I have four or less life, when he's used in a combo, his auto, I get to draw a card. Um, so I will draw my card. Super combos are great to use in these scenarios because you can combo for free. I don't lose any of my hand, uh, anything from my hand. And then it's as if the attack never really happened. Yep. And he got out of the 20,000 because his leader now went to 25,000, which is greater than 20,000. So he doesn't have to take the damage from that attack. Yep. Yep. Now, now it's back to my turn or back to my step. Uh, main phase since we just finished that battle now i know if i attack with deborah he has two energy up and the smartest thing for him to do in this instance is going to be to negate with his topo because if he negates with topo i'll have to start discarding cards every time i attack but i want to force him to use that topo so that he doesn't have it for the next turn and if he has another one for the next turn then he's not going to have one for the turn after that so I'm going to go ahead and attack with Deborah for 30,000 and ask him if he has any negates. So at this point, I have two different negates in my hand that I can use. I can use the topo from where I'm at. Um, it's actually a really interesting position because I have a power play I can make next move next turn if I were to actually get myself down to two life. So I could play really risky here and try and bait him to tapping more energy and really try to do a number next turn. Um, so very interesting where I could go from here. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't know the right answer at this point because I don't know what's in his hand. Me neither. So, Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he yeah it's it's really hard to say actually so we will actually uphold the topo we're gonna just we're gonna play we're gonna have some fun we're gonna see what happens here we're gonna make a fun play so i'm going right. to tap one and i'm going to use after image technique okay now when i counter attack with after image technique i get to choose one of my cards um and i guess i'll explain a little further because this is actually the first counter attack we've seen uh right. so counterattack this is when i get to activate my negates i pay the energy cost for counterattack and it says if your leader card is red choose it to one of your cards and it gets plus 40,000 power for the duration of the battle so i'll choose my leader and he'll get plus 40,000 for this battle and then choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and it gets neg 10 power for the turn and i will go ahead and choose his other deborah so nice. the reason I did that is now his next attack will go down to 20,000. Um, granted, it can still push through damage, but honestly, in this matchup, I'm okay playing a little risky and going under four life. This is a more aggressive leader that I can try to push a little bit earlier. Um, so I'm okay with this. We'll see if he punishes me for it, though. <laughs> All right. So I am going to that. So that I'm not going to combo on that. That's going to be he's going to be thirty thousand to forty or something, right? Fifty-five. Yep. Something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to attack with the Sibura, who is now twenty thousand. Yep. Because of the after image. And I will say no negates on that one. And I will say no combos. Yep. And on that, I'm actually just going to take the hit and add a card to my hand. And with that, I will pass turn to you. Okay, so he didn't take the bait. <laughs> we, wanted, we wanted to see if he would overextend there and uh, and push him without leaving energy up, but it's okay. It's okay. Strong, um, strong I, I, move by I him. Try and, I try and stretch every day, so I like to know my limits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this leader, 
unfortunately is very uh has a lot of synergy with unisons we aren't playing any unisons in this build so a lot of his effects don't really matter we'll go into them more in the next game um but i still do get the auto where i get to draw one card uh which will help me to try and keep up a little bit so as i structure this turn the first thing i'm thinking is okay where am i at where is he at so how many cards do you have in your hand now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so he has twelve to my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so he's up three on me. I really need to make this turn count. Um, I have a strong feeling he's going to have a powerful negate here to play because he left four energy <laughs> up. <laughs> but we will see. Um, so. Let's talk a little bit about how I want to structure the turn. Before I commit to any big play, I really want to see if he has a big negate to play that can shut my turn down. And then the second thing is, where is the target of my attack going to go? Um, I want to attack with my leader first because there's no reason to use these when I can know I draw my card on this attack. So I will declare an attack and then I can decide to attack a battle card and try and clear it. But remember, we play this topo and this topo you'll probably see it very soon is very powerful and is going to save me without worrying too much about his board so i'm actually going to start trying to pressure him and i'll declare this attack at his leader pending my auto so in response to this attack i am going oh. to attempt to activate a dimension magic oh whew. uh dimension magic is could have been way energy. worse one energy negate and when i pay one energy for it it says if your leader card is blue negate the attack then choose up to two of your blue energy and switch them to active mode so this actually puts me back at five energy and when i after i activate that negate it's going to go to my drop area which is where jimmy's super combo and his after image are these negates dimension magic and after image are the blue and red sparking negates and what that means is these both have a skill that says sparking five now if i didn't have any energy and i had five cards in my drop area i could use one of my life add it to my hand and activate this negate which would still untap two energy so it's very strong skill to be able to use that but i don't have any cards in my drop area so i have to pay the energy for this and that puts me back at five energy now his auto will resolve. Yep, and that's the really cool thing is even if they negate your attack, you still did a declare the attack. The auto already was pending. So this auto will still resolve and I will still get to draw my one card. All right, so that could have been a lot worse. <laughs> we'll see. It, it still could get a lot worse, but we will see. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take one of my favorite boy and we're going to pressure him. We're going to go ahead and attack his leader. And now, instead of saying whether I have a negate or not, I have a very important question to ask, Jimmy. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, he yeah, has it. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> all right. So I actually did have a negate. That's why I had all this energy up. That's why I had four energy up last time, but he didn't play into my trap. This negate is fantastic. It's a uh, counter attack, negate the attack and play this card. So this is a battle card that gets played with negating the attack. And when this card is played, my opponent can't attack for the turn unless they place one of their energy in their drop area. So this is something called a floodgate. And what this card means is it's floodgating his attacks because if he chooses to continue attacking, he's gonna have to destroy his own energy which isn't a huge deal for his deck, but the other benefit of having this block, this card out is it also has a skill called blocker, which means when he attacks my leader, I can redirect the attack at this card and he's gonna be minus in energy, which is a really, really good value. Now, the reason why I negated with dimension magic before negating with this card was because I only had four energy open and I wanted to leave energy untapped in case I needed more negates, which suggests to him that I have more negates in his hand which would lead him to believe that it may be a negative situation if he continues to push through, or I could be bluffing. But that's why I use the Dimension Magic before just playing this outright. Cool. So yeah, so that ruined my turn. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're um, not ready to rumble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. So at this point, what I have to think about is if I swing, I'm going to lose an energy, which one energy already is bad. Um, but what's even worse is he can block. So now if I even want to try to punish him and push, I'm going to lose two energy and being two energy down here is just, 
I might as well just scoop and say you win. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So at this point, what I will do is go back to focusing on building a board. I will tap two and we will play a Super Saiyan Sun Goku. Yo, yeah, nice. And uh, at this point, I'm going to leave some energy up so I have some room to defend with next turn. And um, yeah, that's that's all I'm willing to do here. <laughs> so I will pass turn. <laughs> all right. I will draw a turn and Vegeta makes his entrance. Vegeta against Vegeta. I wonder how Vegeta feels about the GT Vegeta. He's like, God damn, like how did he get such how did he get such hip style? All the leather? Like who got did Balma go shopping for him and just buy him a bunch of leather outfits? They're, they're so sleek. Alright, so I'm gonna charge a card here for my turn, and I think I'm gonna charge this Majin Buu, because these one energy 10k cards are not gonna be doing too much in this matchup at this point. Now, again, with my leader, I want to use energy before I attack with anything. So I'm going to pay another three energy for an oob. Ooh, now I have favorite. three energy. Yeah. Yo, Sha. All right. So, hair out of here. And now I smell a topo coming. So I want to attack with my leader first so that I can get my energy back and draw a card. So I'm going to use my leader to declare an attack on his leader. Oh, and I'm gonna auto baby. draw a card and turn two of my energy back to active mode. And here we go. My counterattack. Topo is coming down, baby. <laughs> Topo. All, All right. right. So, um, so Topo is a counterattack. Now you notice he costs four, but I only tap two energy. So let's uh let's go into the full text of what he does. So counterattack. And by the way, you'll know um where your counters are. Um, when you see counterattack and counterplay, the the text will actually be highlighted in green. So you'll see a green border around it. Uh, and it says, choose one other card in your hand and place it in your drop area. So I will go ahead and send Scientist Fu to my drop area. Right now, he's not usable in my hand and he's a black card, so I can't even use him as an energy because I want my energy to be red. Um, so I'll pitch him and then it says negate the attack. So the attack is now negated and then I actually get to play this card. So this is a battle card that serves as a negate. Um, it has a permanent. So a permanent is a skill that essentially is active immediately. So if it's your opponent's turn, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by two. So while it's in my hand, he's actually only a two drop while it's his turn. Uh, and then lastly, he has an auto. So auto, if it's your opponent's turn, when you play this card for the duration of the turn, your opponent cannot attack unless they choose two cards from their hand and place them in their drop area each time. So this is a huge swing for me because now if he does want to try and punish me and swing through, he's gonna have to pitch two cards. Remember what we said in the beginning, this is a hand advantage game. This is really going to deter him, or at least I hope it's gonna deter him from pushing me this turn. And he's right. It is going to deter me from pushing this turn. I see you're not <laughs> ready to I rumble have either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards in hand to his. How many cards do you have? Only seven. Seven. Okay, so I am three cards ahead, and I could kind of swing once, but I'm better off keeping those cards to defend, especially because blue is a defensive color. It's not in this color's nature to push through attacks unless there's a splash of yellow and Kefal's on board because she's nasty. So I have to ask myself two questions now. One, how greedy am I? And two, how nasty am I? And the answer to those questions are one, I'm not greedy. And two, I'm not nasty enough to win. <laughs> so I'm going to pass turn <laughs> to Jimmy. <laughs> All right. So we're going to untap, draw a card. And here's where things get interesting because you do not always have to charge. Um, you do not always have to place an energy down. So I now have to make a decision. I know I'm really behind right now in hand. So I can start catching up. I can decide to stop charging and just keep my hand progressing and getting bigger. Because remember, each time you charge a card, that's also losing a card out of your hand. Um, so at this point in the game, I think I'm better off if I can start trying to build my hand back up, um, especially because I just had to pitch one off Topo. So I'm going to say no charge here. I'm not going to place an energy down. I'm just going to untap everything. And of course, I drew my card. Um, 
The unfortunate part is because he's ahead, he can now continue to get way ahead. He's now an energy up on me. He's going to continue to draw. And if he wants to play that same game, he will just maintain that same hand advantage. So I'm in a really rough spot here. <laughs> and I have to try and figure out what to do. Um, if he has another ready to rumble, it's even worse that I didn't charge because then I have to start popping my own energy. But, you know, sometimes he's got to... Cross your fingers, hope for the best, you know? <laughs> um, so, because we know that he may hit me with another Floodgate like Vegeta, we're going to structure our turn very similarly. I'm going to declare an attack, attacking my leader into his leader. And I'm going to gently ask if you're ready to rumble. Oh, he had another <laughs> one. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Things just keep getting worse for us here, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I feel, so I feel mean. Oh, don't worry. You are mean. This sleek, this sleek aerodynamic Vegeta coming out in this leather suit with this look on. Look at him, man. He's so he's like, what a jerk. What a jerk. What a jerk. He probably he's probably he's probably that guy that like slides between like forty cars on the highway when they're all trying to turn and he like pulls up to the front and like sneaks in between. And like doesn't stick his hand out the window. He's just like, if he does, it's just to murder them. Oh gosh. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> what we're going to do here is we're actually going to tap three and, and we're going to play the big boo that we've been charging all game because I finally have an opportunity to. He's always played in rest mode, but it's cool because he actually has 5,000 more power than what a typical three drop would have. So if I can live next turn and he doesn't have another ready to rumble in his hand, <laughs> I'm sure he does. Don't worry. But if he doesn't, that boo's coming in hot. <laughs> uh, and at this point, there's no point again in attacking. I don't want to lose that energy. I'm just going to pass turn. So I'm going to draw for my turn and then choose something to put into my energy area from my hand. And I think I'm going to go ahead and charge this Super Saiyan Gohan. And same thing in this. I see he has two energy up. There could be another Topo that exists. So I'm going to play another Tapion because it's beautiful and it's two energy. And I'm going to turn back to energy when I attack. And now I'm going to declare my attack, swing leader to leader, auto pending. Yep, smart man. I do have another topo. So we will counterattack so. topo, and I will pitch one from hand. Uh, in this case, I have an interesting decision because I have cards that can serve now as combo power. Um, or I have cards that are negates, which a negate doesn't have any combo power. So I really got to decide at this point, how am I feeling? Um, and the way I'm feeling right now is these negates are probably not going to help me um, at this point in the game. Uh, his board is too wide. We're playing decks that don't really have anything to clear cards <laughs> off the board. Um, I'm, I'm feeling rough. These boards are so ridiculous. I'm feeling rough. So uh, I think we are going to just go ahead and pitch the after image. And, you know, maybe he decides to start pushing because I only have six cards in hand. And now I'm going to draw a card and turn two of my energy back. Now, if I were to start pushing, one thing that Jimmy does have is he has a lot of board presence. There's a lot of cards on his board that he can use as combo power. When cards are in active mode, you can use them to combo. He can't use the boo because it's rested. But everything else he can use to combo. Um, now, I'm thinking, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I think I want to keep building my board. So I'm going to pay another three energy here and play another oob. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass my turn with four energy up. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I will untap, we will charge, I'm trying to do this, hold on, I gotta put the hand down so we can make this nice and pretty. <laughs> so much on these boards. I know. <laughs> this, have you ever played a game of Dragon Ball like this? <laughs> uh, no, I can honestly say I've never played a game of Dragon Ball like this. <laughs> it's, hon it's honestly kind of fun, like I know it's really basic, but there are some pretty big brain things that go on in this and it's cool to learn at this level because then you can kind of build up with the other. There are for sure. There are for sure. All right. So we are going to, you know what? We're going to say he's he's bluffing. He don't have the next Vegeta right to <laughs> That four energy isn't there for a reason. We're just going to attack his leader. 
<laughs> Yosha! Oh my god. <laughs> All right, auto, draw a card. I now regret the topo I charged early on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now, oh man, this is really, really rough. So next turn is going to hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. Yeah. I will yeah. most likely lose, um, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Um, it's slick, it's slick Vegeta's not a nice guy. <laughs> he, he is not for sure. So. I, I'm in an interesting predicament. I know I play four topo and I've seen three. There's a chance, a small chance that maybe one of my next life is a topo, right? I don't have right. one in my hand. Um, it doesn't matter right. that I tell him that because he's going to attack with his leader first anyways. Absolutely. And if I have it, I'm going to use it. Um, so I right. don't have it. Um, so yeah, this is, this is interesting. I could build a board, but say I use two energy to build a board. Um, if I have two for a topo and then I need to activate two more after images, I can't. So it really right. doesn't make sense here because I may gain access as I get my life to my hand, which I'm sure will happen next turn. I may get right. access to cards that I truly need. So, um, yeah. So anyway, so at this point, it does not make sense for me to just build my board, especially when I know I'm going to combo that card off anyways. So sadly, since he had the third Vegeta, I'll have to pass turn. All right, so I'm going to draw here. Say thank you very much, Vegeta, for your slick outfit and getting <laughs> me through this entire, carrying the whole team through this entire game. Uh, I am going to keep charging because blue can just do a lot of stuff, and I'm expecting to go in this turn, and I don't think I'm going to use this negate, which I really wanted to use, but I'm going to charge champ to the rescue. Oh. This negate is hilarious. Maybe it might come in in a different game, but uh, didn't get in there on this one. All right. So, obviously, he said he doesn't have a topo, but I'm going to play like I don't know that information. There's a chance that another topo could come out, so I want to expend two energy before I attack with my leader. So I'm going to use two energy to play that Gohan Skillless card, and now I'm going to attack his leader with my leader, uh, draw a card, and choose one of two of my energy and switch them back to active mode. And you have I any negates. will sadly say no negates. All right, so he's at... Uh, 15,000. How many cards do you have in hand? I only have eight. Okay. And he has uh, 20, 45 combo power on his board, I think. Yep. Um, so he's going to probably start comboing from hand and from his board, but I want to pressure some of that. Um, and I'll just go ahead and I'll use this Nappa to combo to 20,000 just to force him to combo a little more than just one card here. So this will be 20,000 coming out of 15. Okay. So at this point, my one drop shoe is pretty useless. So we're going to combo him off. Um, we really don't need him right now. We're going to try and save face with my board. Um, a lot of times I would want to keep my hand advantage up higher, but if I somehow live this turn, I have to kill him next turn. Um, right. So I will try and preserve board in this instance, although I just want to make it known that typically I would be trying to preserve my hand, but knowing the decks we're playing, it's going to be much right. more impactful for me to keep my board. Um, so Correct. we'll combo off a shoe and we'll uh, we'll double shoe. <laughs> we'll combo double another shoe. one from my hand. Um, so All that right. will put my leader to 25,000. Okay, so that attack's over. Our cards go to the drop area that we used in combo, and now I'm going to attack his leader with Super Saiyan Sun Gohan for 20,000. And I will say no negates. Uh, and I will toss a boo on there and make it 25,000. Okay, so at this point, we're looking rough. I'm going to tap one. I'm going to actually have to combo off my other scientist foo and we will combo off one more card from him. We'll combo off this one drop Vegeta and that will put All me right. to 30. Uh, also notice I tapped one for this combo because remember what we talked about in the beginning, the first number you see is how much energy it needs. So this foo right. has a one and then it says plus 10,000. So I have to tap one energy and switch it to rest mode so I can actually use this in my combo. Right, but you get double the combo of an average card, unless it's a super combo. And super combos, you can only have four of them in each deck. Yep. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and attack with Tapion, 20,000 to your leader. And I will say no negates. 
and I will say no combos, just 20,000. All right, so we unfortunately have to keep comboing out. Uh, we're going to keep letting this hand go. Uh, we are going to combo and go to 25. So we'll combo right. two cards. So go in with the next tapion, 20,000. And I will say no negates. And I will say no combos, just 20,000. And we'll sadly have to start comboing off from board, so... Topos, they gotta go. Good night, sweet prince. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just slowly chipping away at his board and his hand. Um, and if he does make it to the next turn, then I'm going to be in a very difficult position because I'm exhausting most of the cards in my hand as I'm slowly comboing to chip that damage away. But I do have three blockers on the board, so in the event that I do have to go on defense, it's probably going to be better for me to keep these up to block and now I'm going to start attacking with my big boys so Oob is going to swing for 30,000 yep. and I will say no negates and on this one I'm going to say no combos either because he's going to have to combo 20,000 which is either four cards from his battle area or a combination of cards from hand and battle Yep, so in this case, I really want to see what this next card is and just see if I have any kind of trump card. I was tempted earlier to take one just to see, but the likelihood of me drawing a fourth topo is very slim. Um, and honestly, he can push through it regardless. So it makes more sense to wait for the big swings because right. I have to combo more cards to get out of them. So now that he right. swung with a 30k, I do want to see what this card is. So I'm going to not combo and we'll see heart of the cards. We'll see if it works. Let's, Let's hope it's the mustache man. And then Oob is going to swing in and ask if he's got a mustache man. And no negates. Oh! <laughs> no oh, negates. So <laughs> You're so nasty. Uh, 30,000. 30,000. Okay. So how many cards are in your hand? I have four, five cards in hand. Five cards in hand. Okay. So I have four cards in hand. So at this point, I have two options. I can go down to one and really make him start pushing and get rid of those blockers because he's going to want to attack if I go down to one life. Um, the issue is I really don't want to get into a point where I have to combo out on a 30k swing. Um, so sadly, I'm going to have to let go of more cards. Uh, we are going to, man, we're going to have to combo off the board. Uh, I'm going to go 25 and 35. All the two drops are gone. And that just relieved a lot of pressure for me for the next turn. So yep. now I'm going to go ahead and swing with Dabura for 30,000. Yeah, and at this point, we are going to tap one. And we will activate after image technique. So nice. same card that we used before. I will give my leader plus 40 and will actually neg the other Dabura in active mode 10k, bringing it down to a 20. Very nice. And then I'm going to attack with the 20k Debora. I will say no negates. So he's at two life here. You have how many cards in hand? Only three. Okay, three cards in hand. So at this point, I kind of want to push this through. Now I know if he combos out of this attack, then I'm definitely going to swing with these. So to ensure that this attack goes through actually you know what i'm just gonna leave it at 30 and see what happens here okay because it's still a lot of cards well remember remember he's at 20 combo. though because after oh 20 oh right 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 you know what yeah i'll leave it at 20 that's fine okay um now we're going to combo off two from hand and try and stay alive here so we'll go All up right. to 25 so this means vegeta and his slick suit is gonna have to start going in so first oh, swing baby. vegeta twenty thousand. uh yeah no negates all right, so he's got 10,000 on the board and one card in hand. So I'm going to make him combo those last cards, and I'm going to say no combos. Yep, we will combo them off. All right, so then I got another swing here, 20,000 from Vegeta. No negates. And I'll just leave it at 20,000. Sadly, we have to take it. Now, unless this is a topo, I'm going to do something very ballsy here. Oh, boy. I'm going... To pay for energy and no this makes way. no sense but this is just the style i'm gonna play another <laughs> vegeta <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and i'm gonna swing with this vegeta any negates no negates 
Oh, no topo. All right, so I'm going to combo this Vegeta off, and this is where you start destroying the landscape unreasonably. <laughs> uh, super combo, draw, and then I'm going to combo the card I drew. Combo another super combo, oh, draw, two super combos. combo that here. So this last attack goes to 20, 25, 30, 35, 45, 50,000, which is completely unreasonable because he only has one card in hand. No, but two, that's I have two. Hey, I have two now. I have two. Oh, oh, two, two. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Come sorry. on now. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. We're getting out of this, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to start comboing. I will tap one, combo this beautiful secret rare. And. Oh. That's all I get to is 30. I have to take my last oh, life. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah, the secret. I didn't have this. I didn't have the secret. I wonder where it was. Dude, those I had all four Vegetas. That was just like <laughs> outrageous. Outrageous. All right, so that was game one. I went first in game one. As We're going to switch the intensity of the decks as we move through the game. So the next game, we're going to play the next deck. And... Um, Jimmy will be going first for the next one. Cool. I think that that seems reasonable, right? Yeah, I think so. That way. Dude, where's my secret? Is my secret honestly the last card in my deck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my Jeez. gosh. Seeds of the, the future. Odds. It doesn't matter though. Vegeta put in so much more work. Oh, he did. What he a, did. What a powerhouse. Jimmy and I just played these decks. Now, if you've entered the giveaway, you are going to have an opportunity to win these decks. This deck is going back in this deck box that I blinged out. It's super shiny. It's got sweet stickers all over it. And it's got this deck, as you saw, has a secret rare. It might be the last card in your deck, but it's still in there. <laughs> and you get this awesome clamshell dragon shield deck box with some shiny Joku stickers on them. And this will be shipped to you if you win the giveaway. And then you will get to play the person who gets the other deck. I forgot to give you a dental tooth tip. Uh, it would have been really bad. I am a dentist. Um, if you eat some food and you don't have access to water or a toothbrush, sometimes you can chew gum to get some of the stuff out from between your teeth, but that's not a replacement for brushing. So don't forget to brush for two minutes a day and floss and don't eat battery acid. See you guys next time.